Uh, our next speaker is Ana Coelho of Ana Coelho Paisaje y Arquitectura. Ana studied architecture in Spain and landscape architecture at the Harvard University, for which she obtained a grant from the Rafael del Pino Foundation. Before consolidating her professional activity independently, Anna worked in various landscape studios such as Agence Terre in Paris, Marta Schwartz and Partners in Boston, Massachusetts, and Peter Walker and Partners in San Francisco, California, as well as several architectural firms. Since beginning her independent professional activity, uh, Anna has formed a team with several firms of architects, landscapers, and engineers for the conception and development of projects that enable the integration of nature in our urban environments. So please help me welcome her. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> So um, we will try to present. <laughs> so the idea is this is a very short presentation. So the idea is to introduce through three projects that we have done in Barcelona or that we are um, they're still in project phase some of the ideas that repeat in our in our practice. So we're not going to explain the project themselves, but more the ideas, some concepts behind it. So. Um, First of all, in the Gloria Square, that I suppose the people from here all know, um, this is a project, all the projects that I'm going to show are projects done in common with Agence Terre from France. So um, this is one of them. Uh, Gloria was originally the crossing of three um, vehicular axes, the, well, the Gran Via, the Diagonal, and the Meridiana. And it was in the 60s, really, a traffic exchange. And then in the 90s, a very well-designed traffic exchange, but nevertheless, an ex a traffic exchange for cars. So the idea when the competition was done was to follow the, the guide of the city for the green axes that are supposed to cross the whole city. And Glorious was meant to become the crossing of three green axes. So Meridiana, uh, Diagonal uh, were becoming green, and also Carretera de Rivas and were crossing in this spot. So ecological connectivity was very important in this area, connecting the Sagrera Station to Parque de Ciutadella, through the greener diagonal, so really connecting all these green axes of the city. So we're thinking about uh, connectivity and how, th this was, how we would achieve this. And this was done in two ways, through the urban canopy that covers all the square and is meant to continue through Meridiana, um, to Diagonal, um, and also through the biodiversity nodes that are present in the project and that have become a reality. And it, this, is, uh, this second scheme is centered into the, um, in, in, the, in the biological scheme of stepping stones, that you can say that it's normally used in uh, larger scale projects, in territorial projects, but what it's meant to say is that, is that if you have two large green patches you can, and that they're not close to each other, you can connect them through a series of stepping stones of very small or smaller green patches. So this is what we tried to do in Glorious. We tried to um, strengthen the ecological connectivity through some um, what we call biodiversity nodes, and they're refugees for nature and green patches within the park. And these spaces are spaces that are, um, you see here in the green, the darker green, the round areas in darker green. These are areas that are enclosed, that are close to, to the citizen, um, that have a fence around them, and they're sort of just refugees for nature in, in the square. Um, this has been done at the, the, the north area of the park has been built already. Currently, we're designing the, the lower part. Um, this is a, a bit of a scheme of the continuity of the canopy and the, and the, um, and the biodiversity nodes in this area. Um, and this is, you can see, this is the park, the northern area of the park that has been done. And on the left side of, of that area, you can see one of the biodiversity nodes. They're not very big, they're like 20 by 20 meters more or less. But the idea was to, how do we, in a very dense area with a lot of people, um, people have a lot of, a, a, very, a strong impact on nature in the city because of, uh, well, of, uh, the density of people Barcelona has, the intense hues, also house pets have a very strong impact on vegetation. So we really thought that a space just for nature, for other kinds of species to, to appear, um, and for nature to be left alone was important in a, such a dense area. And the idea was also to not have a very strong maintenance in these areas, to have no pruning, just, um, but it's just maintenance every two, three months perhaps to come in and pull invasive species out. And, and this is more or less what has been done. And they're working pretty well. And now in this area where we're um, one of the persons of the team, the 
um, the environmental engineer, uh, Xavier Mayor from IRBIS, has done a study on the, on the fauna that has appeared in this, in this biodiversity nodes, and they're, it's, done, it's given uh, quite good results. There's quite a bit of, of uh, fauna present in the, in the square. So this is, a bit, uh, this is one of the biodiversity nodes right after planting, so the vegetation is still very small. But it's, um, it's a vegetation of, uh, it's like a bit of colcerola brought into this area with Mediterranean vegetation, local vegetation, and this idea to sort of allow a space for, for the process of, uh, processes of nature in the city and a refuge. And they also, well, this was a very complex, they're also the, the, um, the water goes to these areas and they sort of create also small microclimates for people to, to, to sit by and to, to create seating spaces in these areas. Um, another project that uh, these ideas appear again are a project that we, we left in the Avant Projecta phase um, this last year, that is Tres Turons. Tres Turons is um, in the north area of the city, there's three uh, Turons, three hills that have been, at uh, the top part, have been, they're not urbanized yet because they have very big slopes, they have sort of a scattered housing, but they're not, the housing is not very dense. And it's a big question of the city what to do with, with the, these three Turons for a very, very long time. So we had the chance with other two teams to win the competition for this area. And um, we did a comprehensive plan for this area, the three teams together. They were um, Scob Architecture and Marty Fran from Girona. And then each of the teams did um, an area of, of, the, of, the, of the whole site. So in the first, these are the Tristanos, just to show you the Turo de la Rubira, where the Baterias Antillerias are, the Turo del Carmel, and the Turo del Coll. So, and the idea is what to do with these rests of nature that are within the city. And also, sorry, I go back. There's also a big, um, the Turons are sort of like the outskirts of Colcerola within the city. This topography of Colcerola that is left within the city that is surrounded by housing, but the steeper slopes are still left uh, green. So what, what can we do with this? So um, this section explains a bit the, the strategy that we agreed with, it, with the three teams. So the idea was to leave mostly the, the, the inside of the Tres Turons as a, as an area where nature and people could coexist. Um, we had discussions between the teams because some of us wanted to leave it more as a refuge for nature, other ones wanted more use. But in the end, we agreed to sort of um, design in the edges of the park where there's contact with the city, more usable spaces that we called pocket parks where uh, more activity could happen. And then when people went inside the park, they were, very, they were led through pathways that were very well designed and sort of kept people out of the more natural areas of the Turons. And then the top parts, which uh, I don't know if you know in Turo del Carmel, it's a hilltop that has an amazing view of the city to sort of protect those areas and do smaller paths and um, try to sort of invite people there, but not make it sort of like a big um, call out to, to, to the people and try to keep those spaces uh, also for nature. So also this, we called it Parc Naturba, um, and this is this idea of how to make people coexist with nature in this space. And then our mission was to design uh, this um, lower area, the lower on the right, where there is, it's on top of, of the uh, Tunnel de la Rubira next to Alfonso Deo, and it has three quarries that are not very well known, because the, right now they are really the back of the city. They're, one of them is a parking, another one is meant for the maintenance building of, of, the, of uh, Parques y Jardins in this area, and another one is a bas basketball court, and really the the monumentality of these quarries, of these uh, stone walls, and also all the fauna that appears, all the birds that appear in this area, are really not a big part of what is happening there right now. So we, we thought this had to become from a back, gar back garden to, to a front garden. And how did we do this? The idea was also to, the water that was falling through these areas, this is the current water, um, uh, the movement of the water in this area, so it is sort of, uh, passes any, any way, it finds the easier path, and it collects in the lower areas of the city and it's taken directly to the sewage system. So we tried to sort of um, reconduct all this water and conduct it to the um, lower areas of, of the quarry and create their um, sort of more humid ecosystems that introduced another ecosystem in this area with another type of fauna and another type of, of vegetation. So. Um, the idea was this is um, 
one of the schemes of, of what happens in quarries where normally um, there's the, the water falls through the walls. This is a general scheme of how to act in, in quarries. The water falls through the wall. It reconnects, it, it sort of collects in the base of the walls. And there's an area for sedimentation of the, of the stones and of the earth that fall in that area. And it's also a more humid area because of the water that falls. So this is what we tried to um, reproduce in the quarries in this area. There was a scheme, sorry, um, there was a scheme of, of a more humid landscape close to the wall that was reserved for nature where people couldn't access and there was just a place to be seen and for these ecosystems to appear. And it sort of covered a double function to keep people away from the wall and not have to sort of put concrete on it and protect it. And also to create these ecosystems of the walls and of the, of the more humid landscape. And this we tried to combine with the programs because it's a very dense area of the city. So in the flatter areas of the quarry, away from the walls, to d sort of allow people in and create programs of uh, the sports could still be there. And then there was a sort of a sensory garden, and biodiversity garden, more flexible spaces for people to occupy. So a space more reserved for nature and a space more reserved for people. So this is a scheme with the wall, the sedimentation basin, the protection zone to keep people away, and then all the flexible space of the, of the, use, the usable space uh, for people. And there was a calculation of the water that, and what the basins would do. And these are basins that, they're basins that are supposed to fill with, um, with rain, not with other kinds of water. So this was a bit the scheme. And this is one. There was four of these quarries. And this is one of them. And there was a system of a way of connecting all these quarries to create a park that was a scale at the scale of the city, because we thought these walls could really be an attractive at the metropolitan scale because of how monumental they are. So there was also this double scale of the neighbor scales, the people that live close and can use the space on a daily basis, and also the, the people that come further away because of how monumental these spaces are. Um, and then the last project is the project that um, Eschus Vers that is uh, being carried out right now. This is the competition entry. Um, we were fourth in the competition, and the four first teams are carrying out um, one of the one of the issues that are being done right now. So there, it's this idea to transform some of the streets of Barcelona into green access that connect. Um, there are for pedestrians, are for use, and not for cars. Um, and what we tried to do here is we d we th we thought there were there were three systems or three ecosystems that were necessary and that were inter interdependent on each other. One was the living ecosystem of nature and of water, of the water cycle. Uh, there was the social ecosystem, and then there was a service ecosystem, which in a street where so many people are living in was also very important, the firemen, the ambulances, the parkings, all the things that happen in the street, so that all three things had to work. And then we thought that installing a living ecosystem was essential to install the uh, social ecosystem, because you have to create the, the conditions of comfort and for people to really be able to use these spaces. And then we saw also that in Eschample, the um, environmental levels are very bad. There's a lot of pollution. There's a lot of um, heat island effect. Um, we did a study with UPC that measured the current parameters and is now measuring the parameters according to the project that is done. So we thought that introducing green was very important to also um, not only create comfort for people, but to sort of improve the parameters of uh, pollution, temperature, and so on in the Eschample, uh, as something that would, could sort of diffuse all these uh, parameters into also the other streets, not just, the, just these streets. So we realized that the floor, the ground, the, the level of the floor was very sort of demanded for social use, and that it, it wasn't it wasn't going to be there that we were would be able to sort of install a lot of green to alter or to change, affect these parameters. So the idea was to create a canopy um, with a lot of biomass um, that would allow uh, for really introducing biomass and transpiration of vegetation and to improve the, the ecological performance of these, of these streets. And the idea was to sort of uh, sculpt the canopy, create a very a denser canopy, reinforcing with a lower level the existing level of trees that there are. And um, this idea of sculpting the canopy was also, um, the, it also had the aim to create sort of like a, a usable space, a design space where you would have higher trees that would create spaces that were more, um, would sort of signify buildings and would have a larger scale, and as sort of lower spaces that would allow people to 
um, go below and create more a quiet sitting spaces. So also a, an idea of designing with, with the level of the canopy where we thought the possibilities were. This is the panel of, of the competition entry. Um, another very important feature was the level of the ground that we're really working on because to install all this vegetation and the trees, you really need to give them food. <laughs> so the idea was to change all the or what is happening in the ground now, provide structural soil, to make all the soil below the, the street available for the growth of the trees. Because if we really want to have this canopy, we have to give them enough, um, enough to eat. Otherwise, it really, it's a dream, but it doesn't, it doesn't really happen. Um, so I think that's, that's about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>